For some time now, I've wanted to install a rooftop solar system on my home. And over the last couple of years, I've been researching the different options. Now there are ground-mounted systems, which uh, require you to install uh, basic foundations and racking, and you mount the solar panels to those. And then there's a rooftop system, where basically you install the railing and the racking directly to your roof uh, through the use of your truss system. And so I opted to go with this route. Now you can purchase complete DIY kits online, but I opted to go with a local company who was willing to sell me a DIY kit at basically the same price that I was able to get it online. Choosing this option allowed me to have that local company as a resource for any questions that I ran, to, ran into along the way. Now in this particular video, I show you how I installed the system on the rear facing roof of my home. This is a landscape orientation and the system consists of 40 panels each producing 270 watts per panel. The railing system is unique and I detail that here. So the system I utilized to mount the solar panels to the rooftop of my home uh, was a system by Quick Mount and they're the Quick Mount PV uh, mounts. And basically what, what the system consists of is this particular mount which is just a flat sheet of aluminum. Uh, I went with the black uh, anodized finish. They've got a through a bushing that's kind of pressed into the plate with this uh, very solid rubber uh, mount. It also consists of these aluminum angles, angle brackets that get bolted to the mount utilizing one of these um, through lag bolts. So they've got the lag on one end that goes uh, through, through the bushing and into the truss of your roof. And once it's completely through, it leaves this machine threaded uh, stud exposed that you are then able to mount this angle bracket too and then there is a piece of extruded railing that then bolts to that angle bracket and I've got a mock-up of this entire uh, setup here kind of give you an idea so the only thing that's missing in this mock-up is the actual decking that would be on top of your trusses as well as your shingles and so again two-thirds, um, a half to two-thirds of this would actually slide up under the tabs of your shingles and then the only part that would be exposed is this lower uh, say third of this mount and the through lag bolt then lags into your truss it would not actually break through the other side with, when the decking is there um, but for demonstration purposes I left that off and then the angle then of course mounts to the top of this uh, rubber mount bolts directly to that and then the railing that extruded aluminum railing then bolts onto the back side of that angle uh, with the use of the special bolts that slide into this t-track here and tighten down to, to capture that railing these rails come in 11 foot sticks and then they have specially designed uh, splices that slide six inches into each end and creates a very uh, tight uh, butt joint and electrical bond between the two pieces of rail. And then you also have a T-track on the top of this railing and you use these specially designed bolts that slip into that T-track and when you go to, to tighten them, it actually turns and locks into that railing. And this uh, captive head of this bolt will then catch both uh, solar panels, one on either side, and secure them directly to the, the railing. They're also uh, specially designed to have little teeth in the washer as well as the teeth in this uh, captive nut fixture here that bites into the metal to create an electrical bond. So it's a really unique system made by Quick Mount. This certainly is not a sponsored video, but this is a, uh, just an example of the types of systems that are out there on the market. So I hope that this has been uh, beneficial to you. Thanks for watching. Now the system that I chose to install is what is commonly referred to as a grid tied system. Now basically what that means is my system will produce power and it will flow into my meter base or in my case into a sub panel that's tied directly to my meter base. 
and any power that I'm producing that I use in my home will of course be consumed any power that I'm producing in excess of what I'm using in my home will then flow back out onto the grid. Now should there be an outage on the utility system that serves my home, this particular inverter, a grid tied inverter, has some safety features built in that will prevent it, basically automatically disconnect it uh, from the grid, preventing it from putting power back onto the grid. So essentially power is required uh, by this inverter in order for the system to produce power and push back onto uh, the grid. Now those safety, safety features are really designed to protect utility workers to prevent um, you know, power being produced and put back onto the grid in the case of an outage. There are some systems that are uh, designed uh, to be disconnected from the grid that, that you can continue to produce power uh, for your home in the event of a utility outage but that's not the type of system I'm installing. Now here you can see I used some masonry bits to drill into the brick on my home and I used Tapcon bolts to hold this inverter uh, mounting uh, bracket in place. This inverter is quite large and quite heavy and actually requires two people uh, to, to hang the inverter itself onto this mounting bracket. Now what I show you here is I'm actually installing a little pull through box and some uh, PVC down from the eaves of my home. What you don't see in the video is I end up removing this pull through box and PVC and opted to go with some 3 quarter inch liquid tight uh, flex tubing right down out of the eaves and into the side knockouts of the inverter. It just was a much simpler installation in the long run and as it turned out I didn't really need the pull box itself. Now code in my area requires that any of the wiring uh, traveling through the enclosed attic space be installed in uh, EMT or electrical metal tubing. So what I don't show you in this video is all of the wiring coming through the attic space is actually installed in 3 quarter inch EMT. I transition in the eaves from the 3 quarter inch EMT to the 3 quarter inch liquid tight uh, flexible tubing down to the inverter itself and there's a total of eight conductors plus a bare copper ground uh, traveling through two separate lines um, in the attic space and then down through the flexible tubing to the inverter. So I hope that this video has been somewhat useful and helpful in showing you how these types of systems are installed. I know it's not completely detailed showing all of the uh, process but hopefully kind of gives you an overview of the process itself and I hope you enjoyed it. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have in the comments below. Thanks for watching.